Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. It's the new Hearthstone standard here, fresh expansion, fresh rotation. What a wonderful time to pick up Hearthstone or return to Hearthstone. And if you start playing Hearthstone, or if you return back to Hearthstone, you will get a free deck, the new and returning player decks. And the new and returning player decks have been updated as of yesterday. This is the new set that's available. There's Hunter Deck, Beast of the Deep, Mage's Arcane Power, Paladin's Legendary Invitation, Rogue's Jackpot, Warlock's Infused Power, and Warrior's Embrace the Pain. But which one of these is the best? Which one should you choose? Let's take a look at that in this video. Overall, about the metagame in Festival of Legends, the early top contender classes are Demon Hunter and Death Knight. Well, neither of those are part of this. You no longer get to choose from any class, you only have six options and the classes change between sets. Well, the third best class in the game right now is Paladin. And there is a Paladin deck on offer and that's also pretty good. Although none of these decks ever include any of the latest cards. So all of these cards are from last year, none of these are from Festival of Legends, but all of these will be in standard format for another year, so there is that. Alright, so what do you need to do to get one of these? First of all, the rules. You get a free deck when you complete Apprenticeship and you reach Bronze 10, you have a new player. Or if you skip Apprenticeship, you can do that in the options, you will miss out on other rewards, there's some back rewards for completing it, you will get to Bronze 10 and then you will get the deck. If you're a returning player, if you return to a game after 90 days of not logging into a game, you offer the deck. The decks are available multiple times, so you can come back to the game, play for some time, then quit again, come back after you have not logged in for 90 days and get another deck and so on. Although of course if you just keep playing the rewards for playing will far outweigh just getting one deck, but it's still nice to be able to come back. Also you get to test all of these decks for a week and after one week you will have to make your choice and choose one of them to keep. While you're testing the decks, the cards are not in your collection, they are only available as parts of these decks that you can play, and then once you get to keep one, then you will get all of those cards added to your collection. Some of those cards are from the core set, and you don't get new copies of the core set cards, so be mindful of that. Some of the legendary cards as well, they are from the core set, so they're not like real legendaries, you don't actually get any, any dust value from those. And then let's take a look at the decks themselves. First of all, we have Hunter Deck Beasts of the Deep. This is sort of a big beast hunter, except that it's missing the new good big beast cards that came in Festival of Legends. So big beast hunter is a mediocre deck, face hunter seems to be the superior archetype. This does give you some tools to build a face hunter deck too, because you get stuff like wild spirits. Also you get stuff like school teacher, so you get some powerful epic cards, school teacher neutral that's used in many classes. You get Hydraladon, which is a really strong hunter legendary. Then you get some other legendary cards like Defense Attorney, Nathanos and Sylvanas deck used, but both of those are mini set legendaries. So sometimes you might want to buy a mini set and then getting those is kind of awkward. Although that might also save you from buying the mini set when you get the important cards already like this. So this is okay, nothing great, but not terrible either. Then there is the Mage deck, but Mage is not doing well in Festival of Legends. You get Commander Sivara, could be used in Naga Mage, in various slideshow mages, in many Mage decks you could use Sivara, except in the only good Mage deck right now, which is Mech Mage, and it doesn't use that one, actually it doesn't get anything from this. You do get Astalor. Astalor is a really good neutral legendary card, but still Mage deck, you really don't want to pick this one. But then there is the Paladin deck, and this Paladin deck is a banger. There's Blood Matriarch Liadrin, there's the Purator, there's the Countess, there's the Leviathan. That's four excellent class legendary cards. You get Light Race, you get a lot of the stuff that you want to use in Pure Paladin decks. This deck is just fantastic. It gives you so many pieces to build. Sure, Purator is a miniset card, but that might also just save you from buying the miniset. Because you already get the good miniset stuff, like Purator Class Section Lawyer here, so... Yeah, this is, this is a wonderful deck, a lot of value. The only downside maybe is that it's a pure Paladin deck, so all the cards are Paladin cards, it doesn't give you anything for any other classes, but still a great choice. And then there is the Rogue deck, and the Rogue deck has the most dust value. I mean, <laughs> Queen Azara, Potion Master Putricide, Astal of Bloodsorn, Kravatoa, Shadow of Demise, five excellent legendary cards. Then like this Greymane is from Corset, so that's not real legendary card in that sense. But 
5 excellent legendary cards in this one, 2 of them are neutrals. Queen Azara currently sees play in Face Hunter, Astral Bloodstone sees play in multiple classes. This gives you all the best rogue legendary cards, even though rogue is struggling at the moment. But this does give you all the best legendary rogue cards and 2 neutrals, so this is still a strong option. And then there is the Warlock deck, which is a Curse Imp Warlock. Curse Imp Warlock doesn't see a lot of play right now, pure Imp Warlock sees more play. And out of these legendary cards, Imp King Rafam, Lady Dark Queen's are cool. Imp King Rafam is a card that is used in all kinds of Imp Warlock deck, because it has a lot of synergies with Imps, of course. So this is sort of okay-ish, but it's a little bit too slow as an archetype for the current meta. Those Demon Hunters, those Death Knights, they're just a little bit too fast. This can struggle to beat them. It does give you some pieces that if you want to build into some other Warlock decks, you have tools to do that, but still a fairly mediocre choice. And finally we have Warrior, which gives you some Warrior Legendary cards, but none of them are very good. Decimator, Ogre, Tori, Blore, Nelly. This deck is... this is not good. This just... this just isn't very good. Don't, don't pick this one. This isn't even the Meta Warrior deck. The Meta Warrior deck is Menagerie Warrior, and Enrage Warrior, these minions don't even have tribes, so they don't go into Menagerie. They're just really poor fit. I just would not pick this one at all. Also note that stuff like Chromash Hell Scream is from the corset, so that's not even a real legendary. So yeah, don't pick Warrior. Instead, pick Paladin or pick Rogue. Those mainly, if you really want to play Warlock, if you really want to play Hunter, those are somewhat viable. But Paladin and Rogue are the ones with most value, and Paladin is the one with most performance. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members, and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.